And then what you can do then is you can get you a vise, clamp this in there, and then you get a, a, a triangle file. Hopefully you can see this one. And uh, before you set the teeth on a saw, now some, there may probably be a lot of people disagree with you, but I'm just showing you just so that you can get the job finished before you buy a new saw or if you just want to keep this one because for what little sharpening you do on this, it'll last for as long as you own the saw. You just got to keep putting set in it. But uh, just to keep from getting complicated, what you do is you just set it, take a file and set it in the groove and it doesn't matter which one you start with. Of course, it's best to start it to either the front or the back. But uh, as you work this thing back and forth, which I'm going to have to set it down and do it. Okay, we've got our saw set up in a, in a vise. And I've got the, the cameras focusing directly onto the side of it. And so what you do is you get your, you get your file. You set it inside the groove and you want to just go right straight back and forth. Until I don't know if you can see this very well or not. I'm hoping you can. But you can see the top, the, the front, the back side of the next tooth is all shiny so that you know you've got a good point at the top, which means this one has been sharpened. But then when you get to the next one, then you'll do the same thing. But now you'll be doing the front side of it. And you can feel how it falls down inside that, that, uh, uh, that groove of the saw, the angle, the file will fit down in there, and you can feel it how it how it sets down in there, where it, you know where it's right as far as you sharpening your blade. So back and forth. Okay, and then the first one you did where it was the backside. Now you can turn it around and check to see. If the front side, which you can see it, uh, if I get the right one, yeah, there it is. I know it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think I can get in any closer. Here's the one. Here's the one you just sharpened. And if you come to the back side of it, you'll see that we've sharpened the back side of it. So if you've got both sides sharpened, then you've got a good point. And you just need to do that all the way down. And uh, if you get you a marker or some kind of a fast drying, like some kind of alcohol uh, coloring, and a marks a lot is really the best thing where you can coat all the, the teeth so when you get through filing each tooth you can tell if you've done enough to keep to get this point sharp because that's the whole idea okay now what you can do is you know there's no sense buying one of these things just for doing you know a couple of hand saws I mean it's always nice to have a couple of hand saws because Really, you've just got, th these are just strictly for small, you know, these are just strictly for small projects, like cutting one little board or maybe a dowel rod or, or something of that nature because mostly everybody uses miter saws and table saws now. But in any case, uh, this is a saw set and what it does, it's got a little, it's got a little finger and I know it's going to be kind of hard to see because it's, this thing's pretty, it's pretty small but as you push it 
it, it's, it holds the saw in place, but then it's got a little finger. Let me open it up to where it's... Yeah, it clamps the saw, but then it's got that, that little finger. See, it comes out, and that pushes the set. Ah. That pushes the set and the saw over to the proper amount. Now, this has got different settings. Okay, I'm going to try to lock this in here. Whoops. Get my get my light over here. See, and then the saw sets up in there. And then you get the one. See, now as this thing's pushing away, so you can see that one is that one way is to the right, the other is to the left, right, left, right, left, all the way down. So you want to get the one. Now, if that's it's being pushed away you want to start with that first and you get it set up and then you just push it and it sets itself just like that and it does that all the way down it's just that every time you do one you have to skip one because then you turn the saw around the opposite way and then you come in and do the left ones and then here again you got to do the same thing you push it all the way up uh, get it on the right one here. There we go. And then push it over. And, okay, and it's set. And that's it. Now there's another way that I don't even use that saw set. Because sometimes it's kind of hard to even move along without skipping teeth and first one thing and another. Of course, I've gotten to where now what I do is I just do a tooth, I might skip three or four teeth and then do the, the next one and then just so that I can get this thing done in a hurry. Because most of the time I'm, I'm on a job working and need to finish it and I just need to get something to where it just actually will cut and, and get out, you know, get off the job. Now the fastest way, but it's not the, the best way by any means, but this is the way that I set them now is I will uh, uh, paint can openers they make great saw sets because what you do is you just lay it lay it on the tooth and here again you have to do you have to you know back and forth do one skip one do one skip one you just lay it on a tooth, hit it, skip a tooth, go to the next one, lay it on there. Now this is a whole lot easier than using a punch because a punch you have to you have to line it up and then of course you got to use two or three fingers to steady it. This you can just lay it there and it pretty much holds itself. But you have to make sure you're on top of the tooth. And you just do that all the way down. Until you get the, the set that you want. That's the reason you do that. Is so that you can have that, that space in there. For that, for that saw. See how this just easily drops down inside. But then you get the other one. And... I mean, it, it won't drop down. It won't drop down in there at all. You know, it's you just got to force it down in there. But these, like I said, these dovetail saws, they have so very little set because they're strictly for cutting dovetails, which are you see them on drawers and stuff, or the edge of the drawer. Here's a good example of it. So you can see how that's been cut in. And that's this desk was probably made back in the 30s. And there's they usually don't use glue because they have such tight tolerances. See these show a little bit better. Yeah, if I can get this thing over here right. Of course now everything's done by machines now. So they don't use hand saws anymore.
Well, the last part of this saw sharpening is when the teeth get bent over, there's only just a small portion at the top that get bent over. It's not the whole, it's not the whole tooth, it's just the top. That's all that needs to be bent to give it clearance so that it doesn't bind up in your lumber. And that's the same with the small teeth, except that it's even a smaller amount because usually the saw is so small you don't need a big set in it. And there again, it's just to give it just enough clearance so it'll get rid of the wood chips and have clearance to keep from binding up in the, in the lumber. Now this is kind of just an over example, but as these things are bent over, they're bent over just a small amount as you can see okay. and you see you put your saw on top of something whether it's just anything so that when you come in and, and hit it over and it doesn't have to be much it can be anything even uh, just a piece of uh, sheet metal just anything to get it up so when you because you, you really don't want to bend your teeth over very much just a small amount so that when you lay this on there and you hit it it'll go down and hit the table or whatever you're working on so really it just needs to go over just just a hair mm -hmm.